All right, so let's do the other one, open angle glaucoma, open angle glaucoma. The thing is, open angle glaucoma, what happens? Uh, what is the presenting complaint? Sometime, to be very honest, there is no presenting complaint. There is no presenting complaint at all. It's just like a patient has come for a routine checkup. Why the patient came for the routine checkup? Maybe patient went to optometrist, but what's the reason behind it? Maybe there's a family history of any problem or some patient, they want to go for routine checkup. That's why the patient went. So most of the patients in acute angle glaucoma, you might see they are asymptomatic. All right. But of course, they can have symptoms as well. The symptoms going to be, uh, for example, patient is complaining of blurring of vision. That can be the presenting complaint. Doctor, I've got blurring of vision, color halos, anything they might have. But blurring of vision can be can be the presenting complaint. Sometimes you'll see these patients, they actually complain of uh, a decreased peripheral field of vision. They've got problem in a peripheral field, maybe tunnel vision, bitemporal hemianopia. So they might have that thing, actually, a decreased peripheral field of vision. But you know, when patient is complaining peripheral field of vision, it's a bit, you know, tricky situation. When they have got problem with the peripheral field, they may not realize it, actually. They might be having frequent accidents or so, but they may not realize that they have got problem in the peripheral field of vision. That's quite tricky. So presenting complaint could be they went for routine checkup and it's a counseling station maybe. And then the optometrist found uh, the problem, right? Uh, when they did the endoscopy and all, they, they did the visual acuity, uh, field, peripheral field of vision examination. Then only they were able to find out. Or else the presenting complaint could be blurring of vision as well. So decreased peripheral field of vision or patient might be asymptomatic at all, right? Then what are the things that you need to rule out? You need to rule out a lot of things. Of course, um, uh, you need to rule out maybe angle closure glaucoma because if it is angle closure glaucoma, uh, patient will be having severe symptoms like eye pain. They'll be having pain in the eye, pain at the back of the eyes, color halos around the light, red eyes, those symptoms that you will be able to see. Right. And obviously you can rule out other differentials in terms of like if the patient has got any watering from the eye, any uh, redness is there or not. If there is red eye, you can rule out again a lot of uh, differentials in terms of conjunctivitis or keratitis or uh, uh, like uveitis. You can rule out those things as well. Right. And if it is only, uh, say, for example, decreased peripheral field of vision, you can ask questions for other things like retinal detachment. You can ask questions for... Uh, uh, I mean, glaucoma, it's there. You can ask question for like pituitary adenoma if you're suspecting if it is bitemporal hemianopia. So lots of things, red flags you can rule out there. But what are the risk factors? What are the things I should be covering when I'm doing a past medical history or risk factors? So diabetes, diabetes, high blood pressure, smoking, for example, uh, family history. This is really important when there is a family history Patients should definitely go for routine eye checkup to an optometrist, right? And this can happen. I mean, if, if, if even if you are diagnosing somebody with open angle glaucoma, we do recommend, we do recommend their family members should be going for the eye checkup as well. This is really, really important. Right. Psychosocial, obviously, you can ask for like if the things have impacted their mood, how the things at home, if they need any kind of support and if their work has been affected or not. So that's going to be really important. Right. So the examination is eye examination. You need to check a field of vision, peripheral field of vision. And we need to do slit lamp examination as well. And what we need to check, we need to do tonometry, actually, the pressure in the eye that you need to check. See, the normal IOP is 10 to 21, normal eye pressure, normal IOP is 10 to 21. Mostly you will see in uh, glaucoma, the pressure is going to be high. Again, I'm not saying in all the scenarios, all the patient will have uh, uh, high IOP. Sometimes they may have normal IOP as well, normal IOP as well. And when you do the examination, you check field of vision, you do slit lamp examination, you do fundoscopy, you do like direct indirect ophthalmoscopy, then only you'll be able to find out what is the problem, right? So in tonometry, the pressure IOP may be normal, may not be normal, maybe it's high, right? So what do you do? Uh, first is like admission, uh, that is 
immediate referral again because uh, we need to treat this patient as soon as possible. We don't want uh, the patient having problems in the future, right? Symptomatic treatment. So the thing is, as I said, a patient may not have any symptom at all. Patient may not have any symptoms. So what is symptomatic treatment? Nothing much that you can do. But what is the specific treatment that you need to do when we have got uh, uh, open angle glaucoma? It's going to be surgery. It's going to be surgery. Uh, you need to decrease the pressure inside the eye. So mainly it's surgery or laser treatment that is done. Obviously, we have got uh, the treatment in terms of uh, uh, the medicines as well, but first line of treatment is going to be surgery or the laser treatment, right? Or else we have got the treatment like Timolol that is going to decrease the secretion, pilocarpine to constrict the pupil, and acetazolamide to decrease the fluid production. Again, you don't need to name these things to the patient. Just simply say, going to give you some medications to that. We can decrease the fluid production. We can decrease the uh, secretion and increase the excretion of the fluid. That is what we need to do. So, when you have got angle closure glaucoma, we go for uh, medical treatment first. But here you go for surgical treatment first. That is the main thing. Laser and surgery treatment, that is what you need to mention. Tell the patient to report to DBLA. And safety netting is if the patient is having vision loss. Vision loss, that is really important. The make sure patient uh, need to tell you. That is really important, right? IPS, uh, what we have to do is ICE again. Idea, concern, expectation. Make sure we are not missing on these things we're not missing on these things chuck and check that's really important you know uh, when you're giving the information sometime what happened is uh, we have got uh, too much of information with us too much of information then uh, what we have to do we have to do chuck and check uh, give a bit of information make sure if patient is able to understand it or not and once you check the understanding then only you'll go ahead Summarize, that is really important. If you can summarize and then you can uh, explain the management, that would be better. Keep acknowledging, patient will have a lot of concern in the beginning, in the middle, in the end of the station. Keep acknowledging the patient's emotions. Body language, always have positive body language. Do not miss signposting, very important. Active listening is very important. And in the end, obviously, we can give some leaflets as well to the patient right? So the patient might ask you a question, can I continue driving? For the time being, you have to admit the patient and deciding about driving, it's only once we have got the uh, results. I mean, how severe the problem is. All right. Mm -hmm.